a declining soil fertility uh, plane, which is going to have huge impl implications for poverty, productivity and sustainability of our whole economy. It's not just going to be the rural people that suffer, it's going to be everyone from the people that live in the rural areas to the urban areas. Kankara feti yezi pafa mpano Kwa yamba tinayu kulima raisi Tinayu kulima raisi tinasinta Fukwa chao mpula kuna mbura chilara Mimi na Susan Piri Ine ndine Crispin Momba, e, ninkara mwanzi mwamu seke. Chifi Onda Onda, Districti Mufunsa. Human activity from industrial pollution to a rising population and related over-exploitation of natural resources are driving up the Earth's temperature and changing the world as we know it. As a result of climate change, Shifts in average weather patterns, such as rainfall, temperature and winds, adversely affect the 1.6 million Zambian smallholder farmers that rely on natural ecosystems for food production, for their livelihoods and threaten Zambia's food security. Zambia is a country which is uh, blessed with a lot of land and water resources, fertile soils and a very favorable climate. Uh, in such an environment, uh, agriculture offers a lot of opportunities, in particular for those farmers which, who produce beyond their own consumption, and the so-called emerging farmers. We believe that agriculture in Zambia should be seen, first of all, as a business, where farmers increase their productivity, their access to markets and their income. But agriculture in Zambia should be also a sustainable business where farmers manage their natural resources, their lands and their water resources in a way that keeps these lands fertile also for future generations. Basically our farmers in the region, not, not specifically in Zambia, but I think all farmers are facing the same thing in sub-Saharan Africa, is they come from a situation where farming was relatively easy because they had fertile soils and even if the crops failed they'll be able to use the natural resource base uh, to survive off, you know, even if, even if the crops failed, which happens sometimes, uh, they could go to the fish, the wildlife, the livestock, all the, all the natural resources, the timber products, non-timber products from the forest. So they had a bit of a basis, you know, to, to live off. Now what we're seeing is we're having an increase in population of people, more demand on the natural resources, both from the rural people and from the urban people. So the natural resource base is diminishing. So actually, although the market is increasing and the potential for agriculture is actually increasing for smallholder farmers in terms of their marketplace, what's actually happening is they're not, they're not uh, farming in a sustainable manner. Mvula poyamba inaru kuloka mnovemba, inaru kuloka buino kwambi, kopanda vudu ilio, ilio ze. Koma ina sinta, inaguyamba kuloka mdizemba, dipo karakwedo kache, Nikovuta vuta. Chifukwa chache, tange na mu conservation farming. So being climate smart is basically helping the farmers to adapt to a climate which is now more erratic than it was before. Uh, in a context where their soils are actually usually declining in soil fertility and as a result of that loss of organic matter, they're, they're becoming more and more vulnerable to changes in climate. We've reached a stage where we can safely say we're having mass land degradation as a result of smallholder farming practices and deforestation, and we need to turn this around. Over 1.6 million Zambian smallholder farmers have been affected by the changes in the weather pattern. Because of these changes, climate-smart agriculture techniques are being promoted across the country so that farmers can have improved and sustained productivity, increased profits, and food security while preserving and enhancing the resource base 
and the environment through farm diversity. For us to, to be able to achieve the aims of uh, uh, climate smart agriculture, what we need to do is uh, for, for farmers to actually engage into doing three simple things. Uh, farmers need to reduce on the tilling of their land. Farmers also have to make sure that uh, their, uh, their fields uh, are actually covered. And uh, we also want to make sure that farmers have a di diversity of crops. So conservation farming is more like a Kambeho. Chaga chino, pamene nali mamirisi. Chaga chibuera nizali maposha. Pa Japanari inshawa, chaga chibuera icho nili mapijo nti. So tisinta sinta kuti soiro ya tu inkare ya bwino. Pamene nali manya mundo roku ika po mirisi. Awe nikolo la morimba. Then na gulamo ngombe, na punzi silamo wana wa skuru, eh, na kitilamo zina zosia na siya, na kuguri lamo mativi, na wofundi kila panyumba, bambiri mbiri. A lot of small scale farmers in particular, they go into conservation farming if there is a supporting service. Say there's an NGO or government is giving certain inputs that make them go into conservation farming. What we have discovered is that for sure a person who continuously uses conservation farming gets better incomes than the one who does not do conservation farming. And especially when it comes to dry periods, we've seen those farmers who have practiced conservation farming getting better yields and better incomes than those who have not. For the past four years, FAO has been implementing a project in collaboration with the Minister of Agriculture, and this project has been funded by the European Union. Uh, when we started four years ago, we had farmers producing an average of 1.2 metric tons of maize per hectare. As we are exiting on the project, the farmers' production has gone up to 3.2 metric tons per hectare. While we, there were no major changes in terms of the number of meals, but the diversity of those meals has improved, thereby leading to improvements in the nutritional status of these households. Income levels have changed for the, these households. When we started off, for example, an average annual income per household or by a farmer was around 4,000 kwacha. Now we have over 9,500 kwacha annual income from the households that have been um, are participating on the program coming from the various uh, produce that they have been able to market. Through the European Development Fund, the European Union plans to continue supporting over 500,000 entrepreneurial smallholder farmers who are benefiting from the EU agriculture program so they can be nurtured to ensure that resources are managed in a sustainable way to improve their productivity under increasing variable climatic conditions. This will in turn translate into lower levels of malnutrition, leading to a wealthier and better nourished Zambia. This new program will start at the beginning of 2019 and has a budget of 87 million euros of grants. That is more than 1 billion Zambian kocha. We will continue supporting climate smart agriculture or conservation agriculture and we will help and facilitate the effective management of water resources by the rural communities and by the government. We are very much aware it's an ambitious program but we are also fully confident that we can make a difference and contribute to reducing rural poverty and malnutrition, which remain two major obstacles to the development of Zambia. Zawana and the Ramyam Doronia Buino. Buino Akaena, no Titambo Gris and Drama, see short up a number. Timagiran Drama every week. Gugiran Drama, stick up your panumba.